So here's the, the Canary, we're actually here, just um, south uh, of the archipelago, uh, going west, we're going west currently. The direct road takes you straight there to the Caribbean. Usually the route you take is going south like this, you've got some northerly wind, and then in the Cabo Verde you get the trade wind, and they take you across. If you take a northern route, you go rather like this, but here, you can encounter some very strong wind. Um, so that's, you've got actually the low pressure turning like that. So the game, if you do that, but that's more of a racing strategy, is to stay on top of the low pressure and get their wind to go down. But when doing that, you're pretty sure that you're gonna have to cross at least one or two um, cold and hot fronts with a um, very strong wind. Uh, that's why usually in cruising, you take rather the southern route. So since uh, last night, since we rounded the, the southern point of uh, Grand Canaria, we've been going west uh, because it seems that, the, that there's some northerly wind a bit west from the Canaries, so that's what we are trying to catch. Um, and it's quite a, a complicated situation because um, when we were on land, we were able to download um, all the grip from several models uh, over the next 10 days. Um, and that showed us that um, there was a clear uh, option either to the south or to the north of the direct route. Um, and we decided to take the southern option, which usually makes for a more comfortable sailing. You can get a very good wind if you go to the north, but you usually encounter some low pressure and you end up uh, facing strong winds. So it can be a fast passage, but really not comfortable. Um, and, and I mean, in some races, people do it, but usually when cruising, you tend to take the, the soft road. But now that we're at sea, we can't download all those uh, grips, so we've got Predict Wind, which is a very good tool, but we can only download the grip for a certain number of days, otherwise the files are too big for the Iridium set fund. And so we just have uh, three days of grip. And the models, if you are looking at the next three days, clearly it's better to take the north route. So they are all advising us to go uh, north. Hello, so it's uh, the morning of uh, Wednesday uh, 9th, uh, the seventh day of the trip since we left uh, Grand Canaria. And uh, after a day and a half uh, of uh, motoring, I think we are starting to get some wind to get uh, out of this uh, small uh, anticyclone. Basically, that, that's the big Azores anticyclone. It was cut in two by a, a low pressure. Um, so we were in, caught in the eastern part of the anticyclone uh, that kind of uh, blocked us from going to the Cap Verde. Um, so you can see on the on the chart that uh, like last night we basically had the wind which was coming from the southeast here to the east and then east northeast. We were going more and more south until we jive this morning. Um, so that's the, the, the wing shape uh, that is typical when you're getting in the, in the trade wind, you usually have uh, this type. Um, and to show you a little bit more where we are, uh, we're about uh, 1,700 miles from the Caribbean. And on the, on the routing, on the weather forecast from uh, Predict Wind, we see as well that uh, the different routes all now stay close to the direct course. Um, just taking advantage of the small variation in, the, in wind to, to jive at the right moment. To try and always be um, on the tack that's bringing you the fastest or the closest to the arrival. You know, so today it's uh, Monday, February 14th, so it's our 12th day at sea. Uh, it's about uh, 8 a.m., just before 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, over the past uh, 36 hours, um, we've uh, furled uh, the Code Zero and went uh, wing on wing with uh, the Jeep, partially furled and the mainsail, so the two sails uh, like this, and going dead down wind and down the wave, or the, or the, same, the, the same direction as the wave. Um, Typically, um, you normally think that you would uh, be going faster if you love and if you have the consume, which I think is true uh, theoretically at least. Uh, but what I've seen by comparing or progress to what the routing was advising is we've actually done uh, slightly better. Um, we've covered less distance, but we've come closer uh, to our destination, which is Martinique, by staying on the direct course. Um, 
And I think there's one main reason for there's two reasons for that. One is obviously um, we covered less distance by staying on the direct course, so you need to have a, a, a great acceleration by luffing for it to be worth it. And the second reason is um, on flat water that would work, but with the kind of two, two meters and a half, three meter, three meter and a half for the biggest ones, uh, swell we have. Uh, by having the boat directly in the direction of the wave, we're actually accelerating a lot, and we've got a more stable route. So it's proven to be um, to be the best choice, um, not intuitive. Uh, on a racing uh, multi hull I think that would be different. But for a cruising cut, I think looking at the wave direction is really, really crucial. And if you can get really down the wave, uh, you make good progress. And uh, that's something that is a bit hard to analyze with a predict wind in, in its uh, standard uh, version. Um, if you get the pro version, then you can also use your uh, wave borders on top of the boat borders. But then you, you need a, a lot of um, bandwidth. Um, I think that's really something that most cruising cat uh, will not be able to do. Uh, but at least when making your uh, choices, taking into account uh, the waves, um, has you know, proved to be a very valuable um, idea. Uh, that can actually bring you closer to your goal uh, while also having a more stable boat so a nicer uh, sailing experience for everybody and this morning because yesterday i saw when uh, looking at the grid that something big was happening north um, i've actually downloaded a much bigger area than what a predict wind um, would have chosen naturally um, that's also something i find interesting a predict wind would advise you to download the smallest area possible for your routing so you, you don't use too much data and it goes faster. Uh, but I wanted to see what's happening and it's interesting because you see uh, that very strong winds can be blowing 35 to 40 knots that's coming uh, north of the route. Uh, and that's going to be an important factor for us to choose. We'll definitely stay south of the direct course, course rather than north, uh, which we wouldn't have seen if we had just unloaded the, the small uh, part. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And then obviously you see that the low wind area, that's gonna be for f last few days, uh, we'll have to manage through that. Hello, we're uh, Sunday 20th uh, of February. Uh, just crossed the uh, 500 miles uh, mark, so less than 500 miles to go. Um, there's uh, very little wind, we've got about uh, 8 to 9 knots uh, of breeze um, directly from uh, behind on the direct course. Um, so we had a big decision to make, um, do we go south or, or north, uh, what tack do we go on? And when comparing the two forecast, uh, we've got two models, um, the PWG and PWE. And one says to go to the north, the other one to the south, and they actually jibe at the same time uh, over the next three or four days, uh, each on a different type, like in a, in a regatta if they were doing some kind of match racing, but on the ocean. Um, so how do we choose, uh, you know, uh, we could toss a coin, uh, maybe not uh, the best method. Um, so what we are taking into account is the swell. Um, and due to the wind we had in the previous day over the Atlantic, we still have that uh, swell coming from the northeast, uh, which means when we go southwest, uh, we've got the swell directly behind us, and that gives us probably an extra knot. Um, so that's what we are doing today, and uh, I think we will have to jive at some point, uh, either this evening or tomorrow. Uh, but for the moment, I think the best strategy is to take advantage of the, of the swell. Um, and for the first time in a very long time, we've uh, seen a boat, another sailboat, uh, going to the Caribbean as well. He's uh, directly down there on, uh, I think he's on the other tack, um, going uh, as slowly as we are, uh, about uh, four miles uh, behind us. That's it, we're uh, in front of Martinique, 35 miles away. Uh, the sun is uh, rising uh, behind us. Um, so early afternoon, uh, we'll be moored in Satan in this uh, beautiful island. That was a cool, uh, a cool crossing.